How you doing? It's Ryan with 1075 Emergency Vehicles. Come check out this week's build showcase of this mobile command center. So what we're looking at is this custom designed mobile command center that we built. So on the transit platform, uh, gas engine, we started out with uh, the interior. As you can see, we have our Technique 8-inch dual color red and white interior lights. In our underneath of our radio faceplate and inside our compartments, we have Technique 4-inch in the red-white combination. So now you can see the whole area is lit up. Uh, we designed a custom skeleton to allow all the wiring to be easily serviceable and removable and allow for additions in a later time. Uh, fully insulated, fully vapor barrier to be as efficient as possible with the interior. Um, our wall surfaces and our countertops are, and our cabinet doors are all magnetic dry erase material. So you can put magnets, you can write on them and wipe it off. Um, we have a custom designed bench. So with custom uh, padded seats. So then we have our heater mounted to the front of it. And what this bench allowed us to do is to have our distribution of our power easily accessible. So we have our inverter, uh, 110 volt uh, outlets, gives us uh, breakers for all of our systems. We've got our 12 volt distribution panel. We've got a uh, battery indicator for the auxiliary batteries for the house batteries. And then we have our awning control. The bench flips up, gives them storage underneath. You can see that they've got some of the DOT stuff in it along with some straps for the uh, flashlights that are in the back. Gas piston. Shelf. Adjustable straps with seat belts to keep any equipment from falling out that they store in it. All custom made. We've got our TV. We've got our heat control. We've got 12 volt USB outlets. We have HDMI inputs and outputs, which we'll talk about later. Uh, we've got a custom radio faceplate across with two of their radios. The radios have bag mics mounted to them. Again, 12 volt USB, HDMI in and out. And then the same thing for down there. Our countertop, like we said before, magnetic dry erase. We have an HDPE uh, front edge. So what this allows for them to do is to put anything on it. And if they do leave it on there accidentally, nothing's necessarily going to go flying off of it um, if they were to operate the vehicle. Got two positions, two chairs uh, strapped in with bungee straps. We've got a, a lawn seal coin roll emergency vehicle floor. So it's uh, meant to be uh, slip resistant. Custom overhead compartments built in house. Uh, not ordered off the shelf anything. These were custom designed for them uh, to fit this uh, platform and the design. Uh, magnetic dry erase door faces, sliding doors so that they can gain access to the equipment. And then again, uh, Technique four inch lights inside of it. All the drawers are, or all the doors are held in with magnetic latches to keep their equipment. And then when we made them, we machined in a finger hole to allow them to slide. So we have a, a Dometic, um, low profile air conditioning unit, uh, dedicated uh, air conditioning only. And then we have um, 110 volt heaters uh, for heating in the winter time. Uh, they are separate circuits um, and it's the best way to effectively manage the uh, temperature inside the vehicle. Our rack area, custom made, uh, starting at the bottom, 12 volt refrigerator, 110 volt microwave, compartment for storage of equipment, seatbelt strap, we got two rack shelves with their cradle point modems mounted onto them uh, to give them Wi-Fi. Uh, we've got our uh, surge protector. Uh, we have our custom engraved faceplate with our Victron Energy uh, inverter control. So this vehicle is equipped with a 5,000 watt Victron inverter with four 100 amp lithium ion batteries. And then it has the intermotive uh, automatic start stop feature to help reduce idling. Um, so the vehicle can run uh, the ion, lithium ion batteries are separate from the chassis. Uh, we have a dual alternator kit installed to, that are, that's designed specifically to charge the house batteries. Um, this controller gives you uh, full control of the inverter, shows you your amp draws, 
uh, the battery states, all that stuff, very intuitive, uh, gives you a lot of information, um, which is fantastic for this project. Um, auxiliary output for the over-the-air TV antenna that we have installed on the roof. We have our HDMI mixer. So what this allows us to do is we have uh, multiple inputs and outputs at all the stations along with the TV on the back wall, the TV that's, out mount that's on the outside, and then the TV that's in the back. And what this allows you to do is select which TVs you want to display what and coming from what station. So you have a lot of flexibility to um, be able to have different t TVs display things, have different things go to different positions. It's, it's a uh, very nice system to have. We have another panel with auxiliary inputs for the HDMI. So if someone were to be standing here, they could plug a um, Apple TV or a laptop or a drone into it, and not necessarily have to be at one of the stations in order to do it. And then you'll just use the controller for your input output. We have their two radio chassis, easily accessible. Uh, we have uh, our box for our four cameras that are mounted around. So what that does is that allows them to display, they can lock the doors um, and display the security cameras that are on the four corners of the roof rack. And then we have the over the air digital TV um, box. And then we installed a privacy curtain that slides up, allows them to block off the area. So taking a look at the back, we installed a uh, ladder rack that allows them to climb up onto the uh, roof rack area that we've installed a diamond plate catwalk that we powder coated. Um, the roof rack gives us a bunch of different purposes. Uh, one is it helps us uh, mount all the extra equipment that's to the roof, allows them to go up there if they need to do any service to the antennas, um, and then also gives them a platform if they needed to get up somewhere high for a higher viewing point, they have that ability. Some of the equipment we have mounted is the FireTech brow light, the sound off signal arrow stick uh, warning light and then you can see one of the four cameras that's mounted. So taking a look at the back uh, we have two more 8 inch Technique red white combo lights. Um, we have a Sunbright TV that's on a removable mount so the TV is designed to be able to be removed out of here put on the side it's got power and HDMI. Uh, it can also be used back here if they so choose to um, use the TV back here it's still plugged in still has power powered up. Uh, we've got a hitch Luverne step so that if they go to move the TV because it is a Sunbright indoor outdoor TV it is heavy allows them to put the stair in there and get in and out of the vehicle. Um, we've mounted pack track the whole wall allows us to mount our equipment and then they can add other equipment that they're going to be mounting there. We've got a cord reel 110 volt. We've got two Streamlight Fire Vulcan 180s. You can see our Victron 5000 watt inverter We've got their distribution system and our four lithium ion batteries. What all this does is it's all plugged in, all communicates with the controller and allows us to easily um, see the system and know what's going on with it to ensure that everything is functioning correctly. On both doors, we fabricated uh, panels for mounting. Also, if the window were to break, there is some security advice to it, but it, it does give them a great place to mount additional equipment. Okay, so taking a look at the outside front of the vehicle, Ford Transit platform, like we said before. The front of our roof rack has our FireTech brow light on it. Uh, it also has another camera. Front windshield is a custom made four module M-Power uh, shroud kit. Uh, nothing's made for the Transit, so we had to adapt it. Um, white override, white flashing. Uh, headlight flasher currently on Park Kill. M-Powers in the grill with white override. 3M powers across the top on wedges to level the lights out, and then another M power down here, all with white override. And then you can see our side of our roof rack has our FireTech brow light with another camera off to the side. Then up top, you can see our arrow sticks now in the red flashing mode. They have a white reverse and amber arrow feature in it. And then we have hideaways mounted in our tail lights to give them rear warning. Passenger side is a mirror of the driver side. Uh, with the addition of our uh, TV mount for the side wall, allows the TV just to pop up, slide in. We've got our power and HDMI pass-through on the side here. And then we've got a 30 amp Kuzmol inlet to charge the batteries if they so choose to when they're not using it to help maintain it. Um, and then we have an indicator to let them know that that uh, ch charger is plugged in. So we're taking a look at the vehicle now in its uh, drive response mode. Um, 
We have our white flashing, our headlight flasher. You can see our sides. Uh, the truck features SoundOff's blueprint system, so we've done that for numerous reasons. Obviously, to give us the control of all the lights as we normally do. Uh, gives us the OBD2 reader. Um, that gives us all of our reverse park turn signals, anything that we would want to use in order to better improve the functionality of the electrical system and allows for cleaner wiring and allows for um, us to make adjustments to the vehicle over time, make improvements to the vehicle um, and not have to tear the whole thing apart to add stuff very easily. So if you're interested in a vehicle similar to this, we'd love to help you out. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us, ask us any questions. Uh, we'd love to help you out with your next project.